Hey man, I just got a smoking deal on Skybox tickets for the Cowboys and Cardinals game next week. Cool deal. I'm in. How much do I owe you? Well, the tickets are only $50, but we'll need to rent a bus to get to Phoenix. So, how much is the bus? The bus would be $300. We can split the cost by however many people go. How many people are going? I need to know how much this will cost. Duh. But I haven't told everybody yet, so who knows? Actually, I do know. What, are you psychic or something? No, but I can create a rational function so that when we do know how many people are going, we can plug that number in and get the cost. Rational what? Yeah, the bus costs $300 no matter how many people ride. So we split $300 by X, the number of people, which we don't know just yet. Right. So we have cost equals $300 divided by X. Almost. Don't forget the $50 for the ticket. So that's cost equals $300 divided by X plus $50. Right. $50 is the asymptote, a value that the cost function approaches but doesn't touch. The cost is $50 plus some amount for the bus. Sounds like we should graph this thing. Hey, here's a graph. The horizontal asymptote at $50 represents the cost of the ticket. The cost would never be lower than this. Actually, the cost is always higher than $50, as we'll see in a moment. Suppose we only have five people going. How much will the trip cost? Well, we plug in 5 for x and we see that it costs $110, which is the output of the function. But, if we have 25 people, the cost goes down. Plugging in 25 people, 4x gives us $62, the new output of the function. Well, how many people do we need so that the bus is free? Can't happen because the bus always costs $300. Even if we had 30,000 people crammed into the bus, each person would still owe one penny. And even with a gazillion people, we would still have to split $300 by a gazillion and add that tiny amount to $50. This makes $50 the asymptote. The trip could never be exactly $50, but the more people go, the closer we get to $50. Whoa, what was that? That's the vertical asymptote. That tells us that we don't even have a trip if no one goes. You can't divide $300 by no people. This leads us to the domain of the function. What values of x, the number of people, actually work in this function? If you think of squishing the graph onto the x-axis, you'll see that the domain is all values greater than 0, but not including 0. And if you squish it onto the y-axis, you'll see that the range of cost all amounts above $50, but never exactly equal to $50. Oh, man, my head hurts. Well, well sorry about that. What exactly is a rational function? A rational function is a function formed from the ratio, or quotient, which is division, of two polynomials. The simplest rational function is the rational parent function, which is f of x equals 1 over x. Because we're dividing by an expression with x in it, there are often some values of x that cause division by 0. For example, the function 5 plus x divided by 5 minus x will equal 10 divided by 0 if x is equal to 5. Other than those values, we can let x be any other real number. An asymptote is an imaginary line that a function approaches but does not touch. Vertical asymptotes occur when we divide by zero. As the denominator gets close to zero, the function value gets very large in the positive or negative direction, 
The values of x that make vertical asymptotes must be excluded from the domain since they produce undefined output. Remember that division by zero is an undefined operation. The function will approach the vertical asymptote, but will never touch it. So let's look at this graph as an example. This is the graph of f of x equals 1 over x minus 2 plus 3. Notice that when x equals 2, the denominator is 0. And so the graph has a vertical asymptote at that value. The vertical asymptote in the picture here is the vertical green dashed line. Since x equals 2 is the only value of x that produces an undefined output for this function, its domain will include all real numbers except for 2. This can be written as shown at the bottom of the screen. Let's consider the range of this function now going in the vertical direction for the y values. Notice that no matter what number we plug in for x, we'll never get a value of y equals 3 as an output. The bigger x gets in either direction, the closer we'll get to a value of y equals 3, but f of x will never equal 3. Therefore, y equals 3 is a horizontal asymptote of f of x. Since the function will never produce y equals 3, its range will include all real numbers except for 3. This can be written as shown at the bottom of this screen. So how can we formulate and analyze rational functions? Well, let's look at an example. Here's another sports scenario illustrating rational functions. A team has a record of 37 wins and 37 losses. So their percentage win record is 100% times 37 wins divided by a total of 74 gains that they've played, and that gives us 50%. So the question is, how many consecutive wins do they need to get a percentage record of 60%. Well, let's let x be the number of consecutive games that they have to win. So they're going to play x more games for a total of 74 plus x games, of which they will win the same amount, x games, for a total of 37 plus x wins. So the percentage win record would then be 100% times 37 plus x, the number of games played and won, divided by 74 plus x, the total number of games played. We're going to set this equal to 60% and solve to see what the value of x is that makes this work. So how do you solve this thing? Well, one way to do it is with algebra. In this case, we're going to multiply both sides by the denominator, which is 74 plus x, to get Starting with this equation, we get 1 times 37 plus x equals 0 0.6 times 74 plus x. So what's happened here, first we change the percentages to decimals, and then we also change the left side of the equation to reflect the fact that we multiplied both sides by 74 plus x. The 74 plus x that we multiplied by cancels the 74 plus x in the denominator and gives us the second equation that we see there. Now we're just going to distribute those values. So on the left we have 1 times 37 plus x gives us just 37 plus x. On the right side distributing the 0.6 through gives us the expression that you see there. If we subtract 0.6x from both sides and subtract 37 from both sides we're going to get 0.4x equals 7.4, and the only thing left to do is divide both sides by 0.4, which will give x by itself, and gives us a number 18.5. So we have to win more than 18.5 games, so we can only win whole numbers of games. 19 wins would put the team over 60%. Or we can use the calculator. To do this, we'll find the intersection, or possibly more than one intersection, between a graph of the left side of the equation and a graph of the right side to find the values of x where they are equal. In F1, let's go ahead and graph the left side. And since we don't have percent here, we'll just go ahead and put 100. We can hit Control and Divide to get a fraction template. 
So on top we're going to put 37 plus x, and on the bottom we'll put 74 plus x, and enter that. Now notice that we don't see anything on the graph, and that indicates that the graph is probably outside the range that the window is set to, so we'll probably want to zoom out here. Before we do that, let's go ahead and enter the right side. We'll put that into F2, and that's going to be just 60. Okay, let's go ahead, menu, window zoom, let's zoom out, and let's just hit this a few times, and there we go. We can see both graphs now. Okay, so we'll escape out of that. And so now what we want to find out is where does the blue function, which represents the equation we're trying to solve, equal the red function, which represents the value that we want the equation to be. And where those two are equal is right here, which is the intersection. So we're going to go over to Menu, Analyze Graph, Intersection. Now you see down here that it's looking for a lower bound, and that just means what number is below or to the left of the intersection. So we can hit any point to the left. Now it's asking for an upper bound. We'll go to any point to the right and click. And as you can see here, we got the same answer as we did when we did the algebra. 18.5 is the intersection, so that would give us the answer. Well, what about the reasonable domain and range? What does that mean? Well, it just means what values of x and y make sense for the problem situation. Well, let's find out about that for this example. So here's the graph that we just analyzed. We found out that I could get to 60% wins by winning over 18 games, so 19 games or more. And so let's think about what a reasonable domain and range for this would be. If I look at the graph, I can see that my graph extends all the way into the negative numbers here. And it seems to drop down, indicating that I might have an asymptote over here. And sure enough, if I look at my equation, I see that if I put in negative 74 for x, that I would be dividing by 0, and that would give me a vertical asymptote. So my domain is going to, at least in part, be values of x greater than but not equal to 74, all of these over this way. Now what about my range? Well, it looks like the graph is going to drop down and probably go to negative infinity. And in the vertical direction, I know that because of the way that this function is set up, I can never be greater than 100%. I can't win more than 100% of my games. As a matter of fact, I can't even get to 100% no matter how many more games I would play. If my season was 10 million games more, I've already lost 37 games, so I'll never get to 100%. So I would have a horizontal asymptote up here at 100. Now, for a reasonable domain and range, I have to think about what's realistic in this situation. Well, I certainly can't win a negative number of games. That doesn't make any sense. I have to win zero or more games. So the number of games that I can win can only be non-negative, zero or positive numbers. And as far as the range is concerned, that's going to be limited by how many more games are left in my season. For example, I've already played 74 games, and suppose there's only 25 games left in the season. Well, I know that I could get to my 60% by winning 19 of those 25, but even if I won all 25 of those games, my record would only be 37 plus 25 divided by 74 plus 25, or about 63%. So the reasonable range for my situation would be 0 to 63%, and the reasonable domain would be 0 to however many games that I actually play. So let's look at the graph of the parent function f of x equals 1 over x. We see that we have a vertical asymptote wherever the value of x makes the denominator equal to 0. For the parent function, this occurs at x equals 0. We also have the possibility of horizontal asymptotes. For the parent function, this occurs at y equals 0. The domain will be all real numbers except for any value of x that causes division by 0, where the vertical asymptotes are. And the range 
is all real numbers except for values of y that are not produced by the function. These would be the horizontal asymptotes. So let's look at the transformations that we can do with the rational function. We start with the parent function, 1 over x, and we can create the transformed rational function, which looks like this. Now the part in the yellow in the middle is kind of our standard form, and because we have a number multiplied by a fraction, we can put that a and the sign plus or minus on top of the fraction if we want. So either of those forms is okay. The negative sign out in front is going to flip the graph or make a reflection over the x-axis. If there's no sign or the sign is positive, that means that there's no change from the parent function. The value of a that's out in front is going to stretch the graph if a is greater than 1 or compress it if a is between 0 and 1 in the vertical direction. The value of h that's added or subtracted from x is going to shift the graph horizontally by h units. Now remember this is kind of backward from what you might expect. x plus h shifts the graph to the left, x minus h shifts the graph to the right. And finally the value of k that's added to the entire function shifts the graph vertically by k units. If you add a number k it shifts up and if you subtract it shifts down. So let's summarize. Rational functions are ratios. This is division. The parent function is f of x equals 1 divided by x. When a value of x makes the denominator equal to 0, we get a vertical asymptote. And we also often have horizontal asymptotes representing values of y that never get produced by the function, regardless of what value of x we put in. The domain of rational functions is all real numbers but is going to exclude any value of x that causes division by zero. This is where we have vertical asymptotes. The range will be all real numbers but again is going to exclude values of y that are not produced by any value of x. This would be equivalent to the horizontal asymptote. And finally we have transformations of the rational function which will include a change in sign. If we have a negative sign out front that represents reflection, we could have a vertical stretch or compression by changing the number a. We can shift the graph left to right horizontally, which is done by changing the number h. And we can shift the graph vertically up and down by changing the number k.